Three years ago, hardly anyone had heard of 3D printing. Then, in January of 2010, MakerBot Industries dropped the first personal 3D printer, and the race to print parts at home was on. I'm Francie Z. I'm a staff writer at Tech News Daily, and we're here at Maker Fair in Queens, New York. We're checking in on the 3D printing revolution. We talked to the tinkerers who flock to Maker Fair every year to ask how far they think 3D printing has to go before it breaks into the mainstream. Three years ago, when you told people I've got a 3D printer, people thought it meant like red and blue glasses. I think if you told anybody like six or seven years ago that they were going to have one of these in their homes, they would have told you you were crazy. I think we're seeing a massive explosion in adoption of 3D printing. More families are going to have MakerBots. It's, it, you know, it's going to be something you either put on your desk at work or put on the coffee table at home. Three years ago, it was really um, the people who could bring them here and bring them to Maker Faire and print for 20 hours straight were very few and far between. You know, it was really, uh, it was like a sort of a feat if you could do it. And now everybody here can print all weekend long. I think there's a lot more now that are less kits. The old ones, you know, there were ones that required 24 hours, 48 hours of straight sort of building to put together. Now there's a lot of them, you know, 20 minutes out of the box, it prints great. At least in the hobbyist market, a lot of people are going down, down in price. Um, I think that's probably the big trend. I'm Jordan Ross from Printable.com. We are the exclusive U.S. distributor of Diamond Age Plastics. The repeatability and reliability of printers is getting better every day. So I think in a few years you're going to see people, like normal people, having these in their homes um, and really using them to, you know, augment their life, right? You know, if something breaks in your home, you know, it might be a really expensive part that uh, you can't get anywhere else or an old Chevy part on a car that you can't find anywhere else. Um, these are things that you can do with 3D printing that you just can't do any other way. You know, it's, it's, it's at your fingertips at home. You have compared it, and I think appropriately compared it, to the uh, personal computer revolution. So initially when the, when the technology came out, people were so excited at this idea, just everybody was getting it, but they didn't even know why. There's a lot of people that, uh, you get this passion, you're just so fascinated by technology, and this is how I started too. I was just so excited about it, I wanted it, I didn't even know what I was going to use it for. You know, I thought I wanted to use it for, for doing tissue engineering, regenerative medicine research, but I was just really fascinated with it. Now you can see that starting the same way. People are trying to get higher resolution. Now people have gotten very high resolution. They're trying to make very intricate parts. So you can now do mechanical parts that fit together very precisely. And you can make all kinds of screws and gears. You can make very interesting art pieces. Now the uh, barrier to convert your imagination to reality and to a physical object is now much, much lower. So you're going to start to see new things come out from that. One of the fastest growing names in 3D printing is MakerBot Industries. The company recently introduced its newest printer, Replicator 2, and opened a retail store in New York's trendy Soho neighborhood. Bree Pettis is the CEO of MakerBot Industries. The Replicator 2 sets a new standard in desktop 3D printing. It's so wonderful. It's a, got a rock solid chassis that you can make things with a layer resolution of 100 microns, which means that things become smooth to the touch. Each layer is the same thickness as a, as a sheet of printer paper, so it's really fine stuff. We originally made our first MakerBot for tinkerers, but now all sorts of people are adopting them. Academic institutions, industrial engineers, uh, mechanical engineers, architects. Our biggest customer is NASA. It's my favorite thing when parents or teachers get a MakerBot and kids get access to it because when you have a MakerBot or access to one, you think about the world differently. You think, you see things and you, you think, okay, I don't have to buy that. I can make it. And that just changes the way you think about things. I'm Francie Deep for Tech News Daily.